sports. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game. Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Playoff push is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. As we get a peek at the former Red Raider and 10th pick in the 2017 draft, Patrick Mahomes. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie. One of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, he's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. And we roll now on the graphics for the offensive starters. Let's take a look at the left tackle, Taylor Lewan. A big, gregarious guy with great athletic ability. Plays the game with a little bit of an edge. In fact, he doesn't play to the whistle. He plays to the echo of the whistle. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now Cook. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. And we look now at the defense for the Giants. Cameron Hayward is a defensive lineman, but many of us, especially guys of my vintage, remember his father, Craig Ironhead Hayward, who was a running back. I think Cameron decided he'd rather hit people than be hit. 15, and they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Working from the gun, Mahomes. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by the eight-year NFL veteran, quarterback Kirk Cousins. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, it's the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break, but how about the guy calling the signals? He's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week, he's able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. And now the throw hauled in by Green. A big play there for the Giants. 42 yards. And that seemed to me to be all about trusting your receiver. No doubt about it, because when he put that ball in the air, I will guarantee you everyone who's watching this game right now thought, that's up for grabs. But this is a lot of practice time. As you mentioned, a ton of trust. And he knows how good his guy is. So to him, it wasn't up for grabs. To him, it was a big play waiting to happen. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. 
Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Throwing on second and 14. Cousins eluding the pressure right. Escaping the pressure right. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. A first down throw for Cousins. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And the offensive starters for the New York Giants. One thing for us to keep in mind and remember, they're coming off of their open week last week. They got to sit home and relax a little bit before the final stretch of the season. They got the lucky draw because every team in the league wants to have that open week later in the year rather than early. They benefited. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing his cousins. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Let's go, let's... 15 yards on the play, first down. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Jeff Janis, his first touchdown on the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. This crew, they were on a roll going into the bye week that they just had, Charles. So sort of picking up where they left off. And you and I both know that when you come back off of an open week and you've been winning games, you should get a few extra days off in order to recharge and refuel. But coaches often hedge their bets, too. They'll bring them back and work them really hard that first practice back to make sure that they're back and grounded. Whatever they did, formula looking good so far in this one. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Oh, no. And the last I'm drive, the line. first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Throwing on second down, Mahomes. An reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And it'll be giant football first and 10. The New York set to take the field. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know. In trouble here. Down he goes, back at the eight-yard line. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations, because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Throwing on second and long. Cousins. 
And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw, Cousins. He's got his man here. It's Green. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down of the process. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. Flush to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. So into bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 46. To throw his Cousins. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 18 there, and the Giants have a first down. On first and 10, Cousins. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a big chance at all. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Darnell Savage, the rookie from Maryland. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. That's big, that's big. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. The throw there finding its way to Boyle. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuck that one behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be caught by Samuel. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Throwing now is Mahomes. And he's got it. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. We'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. On second and goal, Mahomes. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. So they were stopped trying to run the ball on first down. Now they take a sack on second down. The offensive coordinator's got to find a way to flip the script on the defensive coordinator because right now, the defense has the advantage. So the sack means it's third and goal now from the 10. 
Now here's Mahomes. He'll get that to devalve the tight end. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Vinatieri's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, past Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg. Maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard. That's about it. But as long as he's booting him the way he's booting him, keep going, big guy. Here comes Kirk Cousins now to lead his offense back out there. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, That'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see. He's looked pretty good to this point. That incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Cousins. And this is incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. Third down here. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Flushed out right. And he's got Fitzgerald. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Cousins now to throw on first down. He'll hit Jackson complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Never make the mistake of the slot receive. Got a man, it's caught at the six yard line. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. They send Green to the left on his own. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Dancing to his left. He's going to take, and he will score. Touchdown, Giants. Kirk Cousins in the final seconds of the first half, and the Giants are able to add on to their lead. You know, the man on our cover, John Madden, so synonymous with these Thanksgiving Day games. He was on TV for these from, I think, 81 to 01, giving out the Turkey Leg Award and Turk Duckett he always talked about. Special when you got a guy going off like this. I think he would be a, a good recipient of the Turkey Leg Award. Well, he's definitely already worked on that leg. Is it possible he could end up getting the whole turkey? Yeah, give him a thigh, or the too. Turk Duckett. <laughs> and it's really great that you mentioned Coach Madden because everyone knows him from this. Everyone knows him from the broadcast booth. Remember, he won a Super Bowl as a head coach yep. in Oakland. Yep, he did indeed. But right now, we are watching maybe one of those Turkey Lake performances with his second touchdown there. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. We now proceed to the start of the second half. Second half ready to get rolling. The Giants with a lead, and they are set to receive this kick. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. The 
The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Go ahead, go ahead. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll run with McCaffrey. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Play action now, Cousins. It's complete to his tight end, Charles Clay. Let's and go. he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. First down for the Giants as they pick up 12. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. A running play here on first down is going to go nowhere as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys and plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Now Lutz for the field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And the lead stretches. 16 to 3 now. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field. But they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Mahomes will try again on second down. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. 
Umpire through the flag Still usually always down. indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpire's got different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. Now a pass dropped off here for James White. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On play action, it's Mahomes. Got his target, Samuel. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Now they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You just got to pick up a holding call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Now Mahomes. Open man is Samuel, complete. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. On second down now, it's Cook. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's Mahomes. And Jeffrey's got it. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. It's a big time play there for the Bears. And even 40 yards. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Well, Mahomes can't get away, and down he goes. Getting the sack, the big D tackle, Geno Atkins. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, well, guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Delvin Cook, his 11th touchdown of the year, as his guys are back within a single score. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. This will be fielded at the six. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here's the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. 
but you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays, they're going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. McCaffrey, and an alley to run! And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now a give right side. Warren. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them it's still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll run here with Lindsey. So we got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now a run with McCaffrey. And an alley to run. Still on his feet. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And they'll indeed take a knee. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Moved back to the 10, they'll try on second and goal here. And they take a knee. They need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. Hey, hey, Lord. And the Giants will kneel it here out of the victory formation. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. And that'll set them back five. So 
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. The kick by Lutz is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, I mean, we've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly. Then they'll take it from there. Now Mahomes. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. Let's go, but Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. So for the Giants, the perfect season remains intact as they move to 11-0 on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Bears, their luck may have run out. EA Sports. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game.